Today I will be demonstrating the synthesis of morpholine from diethanolamine. Morpholine is a heterocyclic secondary amine and has a wide range of applications, but it's most commonly seen used in the formation of enamines and as a general building block in organic chemistry. But there are also some more niche applications that morpholine is used in, such as the wilgrat kindler rearrangement, and I'm planning on showcasing that in the future. I got this procedure from a 1936 paper, A New Synthesis of Morpholine, and you can find a link to this paper in the description. Here are the main reagents used in this synthesis. Hydrochloric acid will be used to form diethanolamine hydrochloride, which will be heated and with the loss of water, cyclized into morpholine hydrochloride. The morpholine hydrochloride will then be freebased with calcium oxide and distilled off. The crude morpholine distillate will then be dried and purified by first stirring over potassium hydroxide, and then by refluxing and being fractionally distilled over sodium metal. To begin the synthesis, the solid block of crystalline diethanolamine first had to be melted to permit pouring. 62.5 grams of the viscous diethanolamine was transferred to a 3-neck, 500ml round-bottom flask with a thermocouple probe and straight-walled air condenser and the round bottom flask was sitting in a 50 CSD high temperature silicone oil bath. Hydrochloric acid was then added until the mixture was strongly acidic, which took about 50 to 60 milliliters of 31% HCl. The addition of the acid was very strongly exothermic, generating white clouds of acidic vapor, and changing the color of the mixture to a pale yellow. The mixture is then strongly heated, driving off water and increasing the internal temperature of the mixture. Once the temperature reaches 200 to 210 degrees Celsius, the heating is adjusted to maintain this temperature for 15 hours. During the extended high power heating time, the hot plate that I was using broke, so I had to switch to a lower power hot plate which was only able to reach a temperature range of 190 to 195 degrees Celsius. This ended up decreasing the total yield by about 10% as compared to a previous run where I was able to maintain the proper temperature range of 200 to 210 degrees Celsius. The mixture gradually turned to a dark red-brown color as the heating progressed. After the 15 hours of heating had elapsed, the heating was then stopped and the mixture was allowed to cool down to 160 degrees Celsius before being poured into a dish to prevent the solidification inside the flask. The tray was then covered with saran wrap to limit moisture absorption. Once cooled, the burnt-smelling caramel-like tar was scraped up into a blender to be mixed with 50 grams of calcium oxide. This mixing is slightly exothermic and forms a paste reeking of morpholine. This paste was then transferred into a 500ml round bottom flask and subjected to a strong flame distillation. Okay. 
on the subjection of the morpholine hydrochloride and calcium oxide paste to flame distillation, a thick white smoke quickly formed, followed by a yellow distillate. The color of the distillate gradually changed to a dark amber brown. The color of the paste inside the flask gradually changed from a brown to a white to a black nearest the flame as the heating progressed. I stopped the flame distillation as it seemed that the majority of the distillate had been collected, but mainly because the round bun of flask began to visibly deform from the high heat. 43.3 grams of the free-flowing dark amber distillate was collected, which possessed a painfully sharp, burnt, fishy odor. The high temperature with the calcium oxide irreparably damaged the flask and led to microfractures in the glass, so expect to be sacrificing a flask if you attempt this synthesis. To dry the crude morpholine distillate, it was stirred over 20 grams of potassium hydroxide for about one hour. The remaining solid potassium hydroxide was filtered off into a separatory funnel, and the lower aqueous layer was then discarded, and upper morpholine layer transferred to an Erlenmeyer flask. The crude morpholine now weighed 27.4 grams after drying over potassium hydroxide. To further dry the morpholine, about a 1 gram piece of sodium metal is chopped up into pieces and added, and was then refluxed for 1 hour. The apparatus is then reconfigured for fractional distillation. The theoretical boiling point of morpholine is 129 degrees Celsius, and the paper I'm following collects the product in a range of 126 to 129 degrees Celsius. However, I found that the product distills over at a temperature range of 128 to 132 degrees Celsius. The recovered distillate had a mass of 20 grams, which represents a 39% yield from diethanolamine. The burnt smell of the crude product has also been removed, leaving it with the typical fishy amine odor. On a previous run where I was able to maintain the 200 to 210 degrees Celsius heating range, I was able to reach a 48% yield, which was identical to the yield from the literature procedure. The boiling point was already fairly good evidence of the successful preparation of morpholine, however I wanted to gather some more evidence to further collaborate this result. The first test I did was the freezing point of morpholine. The theoretical freezing point of morpholine is negative 5 degrees Celsius, However, even at negative 15, it was still not frozen. However, this result is not super surprising as morpholine is extremely hygroscopic and it's quite possible that even a tiny amount of water will greatly depress the freezing point of morpholine. So this necessitated another way to get evidence for the identification of our product as morpholine. And to do this, I thought the easiest way would be to make a derivative of morpholine and then measure the melting point of that. For the preparation of the derivative, I employed a modified Hinsberg test. To run this test, 0.26 grams of tosyl chloride was dissolved in 2.5 milliliters of acetone, and to this was dropwise added 0.27 grams of the morpholine, which was dissolved in 0.5 milliliters of acetone. This was stirred for 3 minutes, and then 10 milliliters of water was added, followed by 0.5 milliliters of 10% sodium hydroxide solution. This was then stirred for a further 5 minutes before being filtered and washed with water. The product was then allowed to air dry overnight, and the melting point was taken with a automatic optical melting point apparatus at a rate of 1 degree Celsius per minute, and it found the melting point to be 146.8 degrees Celsius, 
with the theoretical melting point at 147 to 148 degrees Celsius. Zero point two nine three eight grams of the four tosyl morpholine was recovered, which corresponds to a seventy eight percent yield. This is by no means a quantitative test, but it does show that our product is substantially morpholine and that we had a successful synthesis. <laughs>